This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1090, an excerpt from 50 After 50, Reframing the Next Chapter of Your Life by Maria Leonard Olson, and I'm Justin Mollick, the guy that spends hours a week reading to you every day of the week, actually, including weekends and holidays, to help you optimize your life. I read blogs mostly, but sometimes books, like today. Before we get to today's post, thank you to Eero. Life is too short for bad Wi-Fi. Eero was built to give you a fast, reliable connection in every room and even the backyard. The single router model just doesn't work for our increasingly high bandwidth world. What you need is a distributed system that's easy to set up. Never think about Wi-Fi again. Get $100 off the Eero base unit and two beacons package and a year of Eero Plus. Visit eero.com slash optimal and at checkout, enter optimal. That's E-E-R-O dot com slash optimal and the promo code optimal. Like I mentioned, I have a book excerpt for you today. I'll share more about Maria after the excerpt. So for now, let's get right to it as we optimize your life. An excerpt from 50 After 50, Reframing the Next Chapter of Your Life by Maria Leonard Olson. Quote, no one saves us but ourselves. No one can and no one may. We ourselves must walk the path. Buddha. So what did I learn in this year of magical doing? I sought this year to reclaim my life for myself and to find my voice. My quest to try 50 new things after turning 50 started as a selfish means of catharsis, of finding joy and purpose in my life following a period of darkness and loss. I realized from multiple conversations that my quest was of wide interest and could be of help to many others. If I help even one reader recalibrate her life and infuse it with vitality, I will have paid forward the kindness and inspiration shared with me. I will have succeeded. First and foremost, I gained the stark clarity that it is my life and it is up to me what I do with it whatever time I have left. As we age, we lose loved ones. We learn that we need to take advantage of the present moment. I don't wanna look back on my life and see that I settled for less than I could have done or that I wasted the precious commodity of time doing things I did not care about and that did not bring me closer to being the person I want to be. At the end of my life, I do not want to look back wistfully at what might have been. This year has shown me that I can still have peak experiences after five decades of life have passed. I learned that with an open mind and spirit, there is much abundance that can arrive in my life. When one door opens, many more doors follow. Before this transformational time in my life, I could not have imagined the people I've met and the joy of the experiences I have had. I try to approach the things I encounter with a sense of wonder and gratitude. The beauty of growing up in this generation is the breadth of our choices. We can chapter our lives. We can make more opportunities for ourselves. Once my basic needs were filled, I came to realize that material acquisitions do not bring lasting happiness. The wise monk and interfaith scholar, Brother David Steinel Rost, reminds me that if I am grateful, I act out of a sense of enough and not out of a sense of scarcity. Quote, happiness does not make us grateful. Gratitude makes us happy, end quote. Each moment is a gift and an opportunity. We can avail ourselves of this opportunity or miss it. He reminds me that the key to happiness is in my own hands. Now I seek to stop and savor each experience and not to focus on acquiring material things. I seek not to rush through life, failing to open my senses for this wonderful richness that is given to us and to enjoy what life is giving me moment by moment. The one that I was is no more. I learned from my past. I made peace with my skeletons and let go of my anger and regret. And I've distilled the wisdom gleaned through my 50 new things into the following top 10 life lessons. Number one, Be authentic to yourself. It took me a long time, unfortunately about 50 years, to figure out what that meant for me. I felt I had to prove myself to the world. I didn't feel good enough, so I wore many masks. But we all are enough. I choose now to love out loud. Number two, follow your passion in life. The happiest people I know are doing things they enjoy. The days may sometimes seem long, but the years are short. Make the most of your time on earth. We never know which day will be our last. Each day is a precious gift. Number three, 
You are responsible for your own happiness. No one else can do it. Real happiness comes from within. I forgive myself and I love myself as I'm a child of God or the universe. And if you can accept the things you cannot change, you will experience peace. Number four, respect yourself. Surround yourself with people who help you to become the best version of yourself. If the apocalypse arrived, who would you want by your side? Friends and family are more important than any material pursuit. Number five, much of our society runs on connections and relationships. Conduct yourself with propriety, especially in this internet age. Never put in writing or on the web what you wouldn't mind the world seeing. If you come from a place of love and kindness, you are unlikely to do harm. Number six, practice the pause before speaking, writing, or sending. If you don't have anything to hide, life is much easier, and we are more likely to do the right thing if we examine our motivations before acting. Number seven, what others think of me is none of my business. You cannot know what is going on with others. Their reality is not yours. You are responsible for your actions, but not for how they are perceived by others. As we say in recovery, to thine own self be true. Number eight, practice mindfulness and meditation. Appreciate the beauty around you. Especially when you feel unsettled or upset, focus on your breath. Breathe deeply. It will center and ground you. Be present in the moment. All we really ever have is the now. Number nine, be grateful. An attitude of gratitude changes everything. I wake up every morning and think of 10 things for which I am grateful, from the profound to the mundane. I can walk, I can taste, I can see. We are extraordinarily lucky. And number 10, cultivate your spirituality. You can talk to your higher power all day long. You can find your higher power anywhere. Rejoice in this life God has given you and let the light of the spirit shine through you. I wish I had internalized these lessons before more than half of my life was spent, but it is not over yet. None of us has to wait until our lives are in shambles before making significant changes. My overarching goal in my post-50 life is to make this world better because I was here. I believe you can do the same. You just listened to an excerpt from the book, 50 After 50, Reframing the Next Chapter of Your Life, by Maria Leonard Olson. And thank you again to Eero. With Eero, you can install an enterprise-grade Wi-Fi system in your home in just a few minutes. I did it here, right where I record at my family's house, and it's improved the speed for different areas, and I found it super easy to set up. Their app lets you control everything from the palm of your hand. You can get $100 off the Eero base unit and two beacons package, and a year of Eero Plus. Visit eero.com slash optimal and at checkout, enter Optimal. With Eero Plus, you get total network protection, advanced security, content blocking, and ad blocking in addition to the better Wi-Fi. Eero Plus is designed to provide simple, reliable security that defends all your home's devices against threats. Again, get $100 off the Eero base unit and two beacons package and a year of Eero Plus. Visit eero.com slash optimal and at checkout, enter Optimal. That's E-E-R-O dot com slash optimal and the promo code optimal. And you can visit our author today, Maria, at marialeonardolson.com. You'll find more information there about her book tour, writings, and to contact her. She's a biracial woman whose parents were forbidden by law to marry in their home state of Maryland in the early 1960s. Really interesting story. Check out her site and I have that linked in this episode's description. That'll do it for today. Hope you're having a great day and I'll be back tomorrow as usual where your optimal life awaits.